Here's the amount of uranium oak which refined all of last month. Why so much uranium but so less plutonium for the development of the nuclear bomb? Because plutonium is almost four times more intense than uranium. Common sense. Amazing sight, like a meteor. A V2 rocket headed England. That V-2 rocket was made in Germany, which was the first long-range ballistic missile in the world. It was witnessed by former pilot Borden. But the question is, how the hell on earth was Dr. Oppenheimer inside the same aircraft? He was imagining himself being on the plane, looking at those rockets and thinking how lethal the hybrid nuclear version of those missiles could turn out to be to the entire world. And those big arsenals are also the imagination of Dr. Oppenheimer, both during the middle and ending footage of the movie on actually how the modern-day nuclear warheads would look like. My god, I expected both of them to be physical when Kitty was giving him looks. I mean, another intimate scene with Emily Blunt alongside Florence Pug would be very spicy. The book which Oppenheimer was reading was based on the aftermath effects of the First World War. The book used many mythological stories and examples to depict a fragmented world desiring for a revive from economic disaster, spiritual crisis, and moral decay. This painting was made by Pablo Picasso. The distorted eyes refer to different kinds of perspectives people hold in their mind about the world. For example, the eye above refers to the broad perspective of someone who is able to see the bigger picture. On the other hand, the eye below refers to the confined and narrow perspective of someone who cannot see the bigger picture. Now, I would love to show you a screenshot so that you can understand what do the deformed eyes mean from the various perspectives of different people. In short, two different people with two different perspectives towards the ideology of each other. Are you still confused? Watch the video a couple of frames back, you will understand everything. Have you ever wondered why there were two different color gradings in the entire movie? When I saw the movie first, I was confused almost through half of the movie. The gray color refers to the personal testaments and memories from Admiral Tony Stark, I mean Strauss Lewis. The colorful scenes refer to the personal testaments and memories from Thomas Heimer, I mean Dr. Oppenheimer. The color grading was gray for Admiral Strauss because gray color is often symbolized with corruption and evil intentions which can be seen clearly in the behavior of Admiral Strauss. The color grading was RGB for Dr. Oppenheimer because he was the hero in the entire movie with no visible intention of harming any innocent. Dr. Oppenheimer was shown innocent throughout the entire movie which I believe he was in real life as well. Also the head of the AEC board was Mr. Grey and the name of the board was also Grey Board. This cannot be a bloody coincidence. Why did Oppenheimer smile out of nowhere when he was seen to be disturbed by his visions just a couple of frames back? It's because he found out the answer to any of his questions he had in his mind after a long time of ongoing studies and experimentations. Now what answer to what question he got was never shown clearly in the entire movie. When Dr. Oppenheimer was imagining the quantum realm looking at the droplets on the window, the background of him became glitchy to a small degree. The background of Oppenheimer during his speech among the FAECT members was also depicted glitchy when he was trying to imagine the aftermath effects of the nuclear bombing on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. This glitchy background works as a symbol of the blurred vision of Dr. Oppenheimer. This is why Dr. Oppenheimer also said that the aftermath consequences of the atomic explosion is too early to determine. It's too soon to determine what the results of the bombing are. Eat. This is German you have to seek out. The food Dr. Rabi was offering to Oppenheimer was an orange. He also offered a flake of orange many years after Matt when the hearing of the AEC was ongoing. This guy really loves orange. He looks like an orange and he is bloating like an orange too. It would be so amazing if Dr. Rabi could live long enough to see an orange president in the USA. Heisenberg. Dr. Rabi was seen to be gulping his flake of orange entirely but right in the next frame that flake of orange was hooked in between his lips and teeth. How the hell on earth was that possible? It was presumably a film editing mistake. I am starting it. Next door. They put you in there. Dr. Lawrence had a spot on the skin of his right forehead which at first I speculated to be frozen blood but later realized that it was a kind of liquid which somehow got glued to his skin while working. Because after a couple of days into the movie Dr. Lawrence was seen again and his right forehead had no sign of injury. Mr. Lawrence, 
You're gonna be okay. Look at the back and you can get to see a piano against the wall. If you look back into the movie, you can recall Dr. Niles Bohr suggesting Dr. Oppenheimer to listen to music and look at mathematics not just as a written note or piano but rather something to listen which means something to practice and execute in real life. And now there is a piano in the classroom of Dr. Oppenheimer which might be for practicing music in his free time. When everyone in the class was looking at the face of Dr. Oppenheimer or just remained busy doing maths and theories, this girl to the right side was looking at somewhere else of Oppenheimer. I'm not. What's this? There was a small piece of folded paper on that specific page of Bhagavad Gita where the famous scripture was. And keeping a piece of paper on that page would make it easy for Dr. Oppenheimer to find out the scripture even faster anytime he wanted. Maybe he realized from the very beginning that the suspected snake under the stone was actually the embodiment of death which will eventually become the destroyer of the world. Alvarez? Why was the waiter so pissed at Alvarez? Because Alvarez was running out of the restaurant wearing the dining scarf on his chest and the waiter followed him to get the scarf back. During the process. Dr. Oppenheimer raised up his head at an instant after seeing another nuclear impulse and it might make you feel like it was an auto response out of fear from Oppenheimer. But there was no danger, right? That sudden nuclear impulse actually reminded him of exactly what can be done if the extra neutrons boil off and start a chain reaction. He definitely had a vision of a massive explosion inside his head. And if you have seen the movie, you should also know that whatever the hell Dr. Oppenheimer used to look at, whether the glass of a window or the boobs of a fornicating woman, he always used to see quantum physics in them. That behind the quantum world, there still hides the real world in which causality holds. When it comes to the question of immigrants, there's always going to be an Indian somewhere. I mean, they're everywhere, literally everywhere. Oppenheimer security file is communist brother or sister in law. You see these two pictures of Oppenheimer? It was taken by an FBI agent when he was going back to San Francisco to recharge his engine and kill the loneliness of Dr. Gene Tatlock. <laughs> When Oppenheimer went to the house of Dr. Chevalier with his baby, Chevalier was seen to be looking at them leaning to the left side. But in the next frame, he was shown again leaning to the right side. For the sake of proof, you can look at the chandelier behind them, which was visible in both frames. I couldn't. Whenever I have seen Dr. Oppenheimer smiling out of happiness, he used to bite the tip of his tongue with the frontal set of his teeth. And I have seen him again doing the exact same thing. It seems like Killian Murphy had mastered the mannerisms of Dr. Oppenheimer. Where are the martinis? If you look around, you can find out a small can in red color which is a can of thyme powder. And the timeline of the scene was from the 1940s. And guess what? I did an online research and found out that this thyme can was from the Ben Hur company from the 1940s. It was a vintage from the timeline of Dr. Oppenheimer's stay at Berkeley. Can you imagine how detail-oriented Christopher Nolan is? He bought a vintage product from the timeline of 1940s for the decoration of the movie set. Well, I'd like to know the name of the scientist testifying. I'd like the chance to cross-examine. This is not a court. If you look behind Tony Stark, I mean Admiral Strauss, you can get to see a woman bending her head down for not interrupting the view of the photographers. Even though almost half of her head was still covering the lenses of the cameras, it was still a good detailing in the background. The first self-sustaining nuclear chain reaction. Didn't Groves tell you? This thing is called the Chicago Pile 1, the first self-sustaining nuclear chain reaction center in the world, which demonstrated that nuclear reactions could be controlled almost 99.9%. That you had. Throughout the entire AEC trial, this cue ball to the right side was never seen to be talking. He was just looking at the witnesses. Even an NPC from the remastered version of GTA Vice City can be more active than him. Jesus Christ. It's a little early for a Christmas party. In case you have been confused, I would like to tell you that these marbles being poured into those two crystal jars were just a hint of how much uranium and plutonium had been collected for their nuclear device. The big jar indicates the little boy made of uranium which is equivalent to 15,000 tons of TNT. The small jar indicates the fat man made of plutonium which has the power of 21,000 tons of TNT. So now the question is, where was the other jar for the trinity bomb made of plutonium? Well, they already had enough plutonium for developing the trinity which had the power of 20 1,000 tons of TNT, but they did not have enough uranium and plutonium in the beginning for the two final bombs used on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Enemy rocket to carry an atomic warhead. That continuous circle wave on the map was a reimagination of Dr. Oppenheimer from the opening scene of the movie. It was reminding him of the damages that can be done within the detonation range of a nuclear explosion. Behind, he's been working with bombs for two years now. 
See the buckle of the belt? In the middle of the buckle, there is a polished blue circle stone which was symbolizing a central energy which is akin to the plutonium or uranium core at the center of the nuclear device. And those six lines, three to each side, were symbolizing the ignited fire coming off the explosion of a powerful core reaction. If the detonators don't charge and the voltage drops below one volt, you hit that button, you abort. Understood? Previously, this scientist was seen to be suffering from anxiety in the thought of failing to abort the core reaction in case of any failure. And he had bulging veins on his right forehead. After the test was over, you can see him again but this time with more inflated blood veins on his forehead. Like how the fuck or not Christopher Nolan made it possible or am I just overthinking?